Okay, first of all we're going to demonstrate um, a use lab. So the patient comes in in a terrible lot of pain and a lot of swelling. First of all, we've got to prepare her because the plaster is going to make a mess. So we get appropriate clothes on and have enough clearance where we're going to put the slab because the slab's going to come up past the shoulder and to the, to almost to the clavicle and down to mid uh, forearm. Elbow's going to be at a 90 degrees if we can keep the plaster in that position without the fracture moving. So we've got a mid shaft fracture here that is minimal displaced but needs a little bit of gravity but also needs a bit of moulding medially and laterally. So first of all I'm going to get my patient to hang over sideways a little bit and put a collar and cuff on her so then if she needs to let go of the arm she can. So we just measure first of all the collar and cuff. And you always notice there's loads of bits of collar and cuff in a box. But if you measure it before you cut it, then that saves money. Okay, so I've just tied the collar and cuff before I've cut it. Take the collar and cuff down to as close as you can get it because sometimes this bit uh, of the collar and cuff can be a bit armful um, because it digs in the patient. So we get that ready first. And then we look at the arm. We, we sit um, the patient forward and we look at the gravity of the arm. Now if we see that the bone looks almost straight, which these fractures are very unstable anyway, but if we can almost get it straight, then we know this level of the collar and cuff will be fine. Otherwise we take it down a bit lower. And now we take the arm out and Teresa can rest this thumb in the plaster like that, in the collar and cuff like that. Now before I put the plaster on, I must have a look if there's any neurological uh, defects or if there's any nerve damage. So what I'm going to ask, because me putting the plaster on, I could cause Teresa to have um, radial nerve damage by compression of the plaster. So I'm going to look first of all, can you lift your wrist up and down? And she can. And can you move your fingers up? So there's no wrist drop so it's fine. So I can make a note of that at the time there was no wrist drop because radial nerve um, is, is very prone with um, numerous fractures. I did cut this one. Now I've cut a stockinette which there is some always available a big size around in A&E but we don't use it usually for the arms like the below knees or anything because it's temporary. So I'm going to put this measure it round so I've got a long length which seems really big but you'll see with what I'm going to do with it in a second. So I'm going to cut an hole in the stockinette and then I'm going to thread it through very gently so the patient's going to help me. You hold on your hand a minute because otherwise to, to hang the arm down um, I'm going to move the fracture. So then I put the hand back. You should really be having two people do this so that you've got one person behind, right? You've got one person behind controlling the arm for you so that the patient's not having to do this herself. Now making this arm, the thing that you've got to be careful of is you don't pull it too tight into the axilla. Don't worry patient, <laughs> you can cut that bit. Right, all the way round and then the patient can hold the stockinette for me and I'll make sure that this part is not too tight into the axilla. Does that feel okay? Yeah? yeah. Good. Right. So now I've got a small piece of felt, again, felt into the, in the cabinet because you can't always take a use slab right onto the top of the shoulder and expect it to stay there. So I'm going to make a small cut of felt because my plaster I need to go to the top here and to the lower part in the mid part of the, um, the arm. Now if I put the wall up here it's going to slide down and that's what tends to happen with um, use slabs, they slide. 
Now if I'm putting it on the shoulder that means I'm not going to get too much gravity either. So a U slab is not an hanging cast. Right, I'm just cutting this edge off. So we've got a clean bit there. Now this top, this is the part that's going to go on the top under here to protect up here because no wall will stay up there. So I'm just shaping a little bit of a point. And this is the shape that you want the top of your cast to go as well. And then this part is going to go on the top of the shoulder because your wall will come here but your wall will not wrap round so that's sure well and it's got a sticky bit on the back which you're peeling off and make sure this sticky doesn't go onto the skin yep so your stockinette would be wide and then stuck on if you're bony around the um, elbow you can also put some small bits of the felt that we've just cut off can also put some small bits around the elbow. Right. So patient's very good. She's going to abduct her arm a little bit. And to do that, if she comes over the side, then she can do that with virtually, you know, not, not too much pain. Now I'm going to make sure I don't get no creases in the stockinette as I go down. So I'm halfway overlapping to three quarters which should be done in any cast of wool and the cast padding. Now I'm putting very little padding on and I'm just going to pull this stockinette so there's no wrinkles there. If you can do that with your other yeah. hand, thank you. Just pull the stockinette down. And just make sure that I protect the condyles and the elbow there because they're places that can be a little bit prominent. Now the next thing is just to cut the slab. So I'm going to measure, which I've got a tape measure somewhere. Now I'll measure on the good arm. So that I don't have to move about her arm too much. Bend your elbow. So I take it about one finger to two fingers below the axilla. Take it round and take it to the top of the shoulder here. And I've got 28. So now I'm going to cut my slab, which you, you haven't had to watch me cut this slab there, but 28, which is fine. Now I've used eight layers of plaster. And I'm using a 15, 6 inch width because if I use the 20 it may close in one place and we don't want it to. We want this swelling to be allowed to come out because the humerus swells quite a bit. Also with her arm, I don't want to pull it too forward because I may angulate it. So I need to take her arm and sit up straight, sit up straight. I right, put the hand now on the lap because I need to get the arm in right alignment. Otherwise the fracture's unstable so I'm going to be pulling it forward. So I need to get it in a good alignment. So at the time now I'm just going to put it around on a lap. Now the two ends of the plaster, as I say, I've got eight layers here which I'm going to dip in and take out. Now I'm not wringing the plaster because I will take away a lot of the thickness. I'm just draining it off. And you find that in a plaster bowl you'll have lots of plaster so you know how much of the plaster has been wasted in the bottom of the bowl. So I'm going to take it out, laminate the plaster each side because the plaster needs to stay together. So we're doing some strips to laminate that. Now you see it's hardly got any drip, so there's no need for loads and loads of mess. We take it across. I should need somebody really to hold at the top here for me because this should be trimmed in. And we take it up. Thank you, yeah, if you could please. Thank you, nurse. Now you see this is not too close to the axilla. Keep your arm down, remember. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> remember you've got broken arm here. 
Um, right, this closes in there. And this goes round. Just keep that like that for me. Now your bandages are soaked and squeezed out. Only if you use a crepe bandage is it actually wet. If it's not a crepe, then it don't need to be wet. The conformable bandages, the K bandages, don't need to be wet. Now I'm putting this on with a little bit of tension. And round, if you can keep your hand flat down, yeah. Making sure I don't get no creases. Can you bend your elbow slightly? Put it in that sling. Very gently. Now I've got a little bit under here that will need trimming. So trim it while it's wet. Don't fold back because you cause pressure. And then I'll get the second bandage on. because I've still got time to work with moulding this. So nobody seems to, you know, nobody needs to have to grab hold of the arm and start moving it and moving it about because you've got plenty of time to actually work with the plaster. I'm going to leave it there. Keep your arm in close. Check whether there's any angulation. If I need to mould a little bit, medially or laterally, I can do that and now. That's on the top there. How does it feel? Very okay. hot. Is Very it okay? Hot. Yeah, the plaster will get warm because of the chemicals in the plaster. So the idea is to have the water lukewarm, but not too hot. And then I can fold this part up and just let it sit there. How do you feel? It's very comfortable. Feels all right? Yeah. So now. If I needed, because I thought this uh, was a little bit too flexed, I could adjust the sling if I wanted to and take it down a little bit if she feels too uncomfortable. If she feels more comfortable with uh, her elbow less, less at 90 degrees, then we can take it down a little bit. But ideally, um, we should put it in a good functional position if the fracture allows that. Now once this bit finished, this now is set. The plaster takes two days to dry, but only about five minutes, four minutes to set. And that's already set. Now the important bit here is not to put a piece of plaster, plaster of Paris, over the top of any opening. So there's a big opening here for swelling, and there's an opening at the back for swelling. So ideally, if your bandage comes on either of these bits, then you cut it and you just use a little bit of plaster to seal it down. Loads of odd bits of plaster here. So if the plaster's finished off with a little bit of plaster, it should be at the front here, never here, never at the back. Is that okay in the crease? Mm. Yep. And it's not lifting up. Right, so I'll take my gloves off. Then what I can do, this piece of stockinette, if you put your hand in, this piece can go inside and be tied on. So this will keep the slab from dropping down. But what you've got to watch is that it doesn't rotate. So you mustn't have your slab so that this is pulling medially or laterally or backwards or forwards. It should be central. So that is the end of the use slab. And then clean the patient up and then always plaster instructions. Plaster instructions are very important so that you can say by making the patient sign at the bottom here that you've actually given some plaster instructions and this part given to the patient and this part goes in the notes with a signature here saying that she fully understands the instructions of the plaster which I'm telling her if she gets it wet if she has any pins and needles, any circulation problems, especially if she finds any problem with moving the wrist, she should come back. And the contact number is on here. So now 
all I would do is just give her a quick little wipe because you should never leave the patient covered with plaster can you move your wrist still and the most important thing is at the moment this patient's got a ring on and that ring should have come off before she even went to x-ray.